16.3. And what you're going to see down the bottom is three right angle triangles, okay? And the three right angle triangles are shown. And what we're going to do is we're going to put an angle theta on each one. And what you can see about these three angles is that, in generally speaking, uh, I'm going to look at the lengths of the opposite and the adjacents, okay? So the yellow is the uh, adjacents and the uh, the blue will be the opposites, okay? Now, generally speaking, when the opposite and the adjacent are, pre are the same length, the angle has to be 45. Or if they're close to being the same, the angle's gonna be near 45 degrees. However, when the adjacent is much longer than the opposite, this means that the angle's gonna be quite tight. It's gonna be a lot lower than 45 usually. And then the opposite's true, where the, uh, where the opposite is much larger than the uh, adjacent you find that the angles are going to be a lot bigger than 45 degrees, okay? So for those of you that don't, can't really picture what, not picking up what I'm throwing down, this is what I'm basically saying. This one's pretty close to 40 degrees because the opposite and the adjacent are pretty similar. And this one here, the adjacent's much longer. So you can see this one's only 19 degrees, quite a shallow angle. And in the last triangle, you can see it's quite large that the opposite is much larger than the adjacent. So that means it's, it's, it's above 45, it's in the 60s somewhere, okay? Now all that aside, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what this, uh, these functions are actually doing and what they're doing, okay? So I'll give you an example. In question two, we're using cos theta is four or seven. This means the adjacent is four and the hypotenuse is seven. And then what we enter into our calculator is shift cos inverse four over seven. And then we just get an answer for what we think the angle would be. The angle's around 55.15 degrees. So the nearest degree, that one was 55 degrees. So it actually sort of shows the right triangle for that one. Okay, look at the next one. Uh, if you're talking about point, if you're talking about three, uh, if you're talking about uh, point three, point three would mean three over 10, which means the opposite is three, but the hypotenuse is 10. I think it'll look a bit like this one. I think I'm expecting quite a shallow angle. So let's find out, shift, sine inverse point three, and once again, this angle is only 17 degrees. Okay, so 17 degrees for this one. Okay, as you get a bit further down, we can look at uh, question five, which is tan uh, equals two. That means two over one. It means the uh, uh, opposite is two centimeters long for every one. So I'm expecting this to be quite a steep angle, actually, as it turns out. So I'm going to tan inverse two. And what do I get? 63 degrees, which is uh, quite a quite a sizable angle. Okay, guys, that's all there basically is to it. In question eight, I suppose we just tan the inverse uh, one over root 10. There you go, 17 degrees. So that was actually quite a small angle. So it uh, rounds up to 18 degrees, okay? All right, guys, so that's the first question. So that's two, four, five, and eight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the next page and drag uh, the next set of questions over here. Continue to use these uh, triangles where possible to uh, do the questions. You pray fast forward. All right, these ones here. All righty. So what we have is a couple of more questions here. Corrected two decimal places, okay? So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna mess around with one or two of these. So see sine Q, question 11. All you have to do is just sign in there, so. So sine inverse 0.6528, and there you go, 40.75 degrees. It's, it's very easy, right? Now, if you look at this language here, uh, cos QPR is two over five. This will mean an adjacent of two and an opposite of five. And if you're using the letters, this would mean that it's Q to P to R. So P has to be second letter. The middle letter is the most important. So P would be here. And I don't know what way Q and R are, but look, you can put it this way or the opposite way around, but that's what it roughly looked like. Once again, we're going to cause inverse this. Okay, so that's cause inverse, shift, cause inverse uh, two over five. I reckon it's going to be above 45 degrees. 
there is 66.42 degrees. So the steep angle I chose was right. All right, next one is question uh, 16. They're trying to be quite smart here. What they're trying to say is five sine B equals one. But what you can say is you can cross multiply that five down into division on the other side. So what I mean by that is this. You say five sine B equals one. Bring this five underneath. Sine B equals one over five. That means a tiny opposite, large hypotenuse, expecting quite a small angle here. So shift sine inverse one over five. And we get is 11.54. Okay, because that rounds off to 11.54. And finally, question 20. If we're to do the same trick here, we just shift tan inverse root 3 over 5. All right, just make sure the root, just make sure that it's root 3 and then take a little step. Then the 5 underneath the 5 should not be within the square root sign. And you get 19.11 for B, for C, I mean. Okay, so now we've done all of those ones. All right, guys, I think that's uh, pretty much us for this one.